I should do this on the tip as well. All right, so I'm just gonna read off my notes. I think that's probably the best way to do it. And so, welcome to episode one of Opening Theory. So this is this note. These notes were derived from a really good um, video series on Go Game Guru uh, before they went down. And so people can't find it online anywhere, but uh, I really don't own the video, so I don't can't really upload it. But I can re, you know, regurgitate the information to you guys, and then you guys can you know do whatever with it as you want to do. So let's just do it on IGS here. Open an empty board. Okay, so first diagram we have simple opening. So black takes the Chinese opening. Okay, so white is playing against Chinese opening. Okay, so here it says uh, the triangle mark here. Black can also play a high Chinese here. Uh, the difference is like small, but pretty much the idea of Chinese opening is like if your opponent. Um, would like to come in, you would be ready to attack and profit off of it. So that's the whole idea of the Chinese opening, right? So it says here on my notes, it says the Chinese opening is a popular opening as of recent. So this video is kind of old, as you can tell, because Chinese opening are not that uh, popular anymore because of the new AI and the new bots. And so everybody likes the new modern Josephine now. Quiet if you're curious. Oh, I'm quite quiet. Maybe I should bring them speak closer to the mic. Um, what should I do here? Maybe I can go to OBS and turn up my volume. Does that help? Hopefully that helped. So should I start over or no? No, it's okay. It's the beginning of it. So this is the Chinese opening. And then the, the opening uh, aims to build a large moil. So let's say like if white plays something uh, like this, black will follow up with this, and then now white would have to enter uh, black sphere of influence. So this is the main goal of this opening, right? Um, if I'm just gonna scroll along here. If uh, white does something to prevent this, let's say at one instead then black still has this move so now it's a double wing again so that's the aim of this opening <clears throat> white can try something like this um, one here black will protect the corner here and then white can back off something like this uh, that's okay. My actually my favorite counter to the Chinese is actually a little different than that. It'll be this, and when black does that, you pull back. So it's just similar, but except I'm playing for higher. So uh, you see a lot of pro will do this as well. Now what white doesn't want to do in the for the Chinese opening is coming here. You don't want to do this because you get kicked, and then let's say you try to build a base, black will still try to harass you and then profit down here. So that's bad. If anything, you want to approach the top corner, you would want to approach the open side, which is here. There's no stone pressing you in right now. There's no pincer stone, right? So here, uh, he does diverge from the uh, thing a little bit here. So place stone, okay. place a stone here. So this is just for an illustration of concept here. Okay. So let's say the pattern was like this. Okay. Of course, it's not like this because you know there's two white stone and only one. Uh, there's four black stone. But hypothetically, in this situation. You don't want to approach up top because this is narrower. So definitely you would want to approach here. 
So basically, if black has already a position like this, you would want to pick the lesser, um, I guess like the better of the two. So in the last situation, you want to do over here. But in this situation, you kind of have to do over here. Because now if you kick, it's okay. At least you still have a base, right? You're getting pressure like this. It's okay. But uh, in the last situation where if black doesn't have a stone there, uh, like that, then you definitely want to approach up top. So that was the illustration that he wanted to do. So <clears throat> the reason why, uh, let me go backwards one. If I place a stone here, the reason why you don't want to go up top is here you get kick and you jump. You really don't have enough room for a base here, right? But over here you did. So that's why in this situation, you would want to come up on from this side versus over here, right? So now you know a little bit about something about this opening here. So hopefully it'll alleviate some of the fear and panic mode here. <clears throat> Let's see, refer back to my notes, yada, yada, yada. <clears throat> okay, so right here, he just illustrate what I just uh, illustrate here. When you get kicked, if black has a stone here already, they say if black have a stone here already, you would want this side. So basically, that's what he's saying on the next por portion of that, because you get kick, jump here, and then um, press here. Okay, so now we go back to the basic um, start here first. So let's white this approach from the correct side, right? So let's, you don't want to approach down here. You could technically approach up here. Uh, it's just as good, according to the video back in the day. Now, according to Leela, I haven't ran this through Leela yet. I don't know what Leela prefers here, but it might be small, percentage-wise. So here, uh, black will back off. If black back off, then white will take three. <clears throat> and they say when white approach at one, which is this, when white, I'm going to label it so there's no confusion. Can I label? Can I label? Okay, one and two. Nope, that's two and three. Okay, so it says right here when white approach at one and black backs off at two, um, in the past white has played three, but that is bad so he's he's about to show you why this is bad here why three is bad because black always has a invasion right here so white will cap this is standard okay oh and um uh, one more little <laughs> uh announcement before i go on here this series is actually pretty advanced it's actually pretty dense it's actually recommended for 3 to 5 down level. So if you're 3 down level, it's going to help you push you to 5. So if you don't get everything, I, I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. Um, so if you're watching this and you're not 3 down, maybe you understand get something out of it. But um, that's what it's recommendation for. So the information is kind of dense. I'll try to break it down as much for you as I can. But... Uh, it's gonna take some studying, okay? And so, like like I said before, this Siri, uh, I think it took me about like two weeks, three weeks to get through the whole thing. And then after I played games after that, uh, I saw progression right away. So I was stuck on KGS 3 Dawn for the longest time. But I never really studied anything else. So I just played here and there. And so I was like plateauing at 3 Dawn for a long time. And then after I saw the Siri and like, you know, learning, understanding, deep understanding about all the opening and stuff, it boosts me to five. So I don't want to attribute everything to this video, uh, these videos that I watched, but um, it did help me out a lot. So it might, might help you guys out too. Anyway, um, so this black wedge is pretty standard. So white's going to do uh, target from the outside, then black connects. Then white really have to push here to gain over here. Now, Black has to Atari and get out, right? So Atari, white will connect. Black will connect. 
and then white will connect. And then here, because of the corner Aji, black will have to play this slow looking move, but it removes all the Aji in the corner. Uh, white can no longer live there, unless it's kind of like a ko or something, I think. But here, you can see why it's bad, right? It's true that white got this really nice influence, right? Wrapping around from the center all the way to the side, right? And so it seems like white's side is bigger and black is like a little bit lower over here, right? But really, if you think about it, the difference is only like right here, which is like eight to 10 points, right? So the difference is not small, but the huge difference on white side is this corner is still open. This corner is very open. Uh, even if white does choose to defend some sort of like defense here, it's still very open for attack. So the reason why it bats back, uh, El Mindorada, I hope I said that right, Drida, Drida, I mean, thanks for the follow, welcome to the channel. And so um, you can see why here, and if you can't see why this is bad for white, um, maybe you should look at it and think about it some more or try it out during your game and see if you can uh, see why. But this this is a lot of cash to give to somebody with just potential in return. Call me Min. Okay, that will work. So hopefully that's uh, an illustration why it's bad. But if you're not convinced, he has another sequence here that he plays out that potentially black can uh let's just say hypothetically black goes here right and so white doesn't want uh black to have this nice approach here with the stone to shut up nice shape so he defends the corner but after this formation forms uh you want to play no I, I can't play right now i'm doing an episode real fast before i play um so after this formation field White, black asset has a really nice combination here to form the outside. So it's one, and then so white has to defend like this, right? Defend this stone from getting cut off. And then he'll play two, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so the outside, white is completely sealed out from the outside here. And as you can see, this is forming into a pretty large moil. And this is a co, but even if white connects here, black will just connect here. Right? So you see this. <clears throat> so that's another reason why that move used to be played, and then pros stopped playing it back in the day. So let's just say, hypothetically, White will slide instead, and then black defends, and then white comes back here. Just a peaceful opening, right? You say this is better than the, uh, oh, let me turn on coordinate. This is better than K16, right? This white here, because now, even though black can still develop the center, um, white's not under attack, so that's the difference. Okay, so here, after that, so let's say uh, after this, right, hypothetically this kite, um, Josaki here, form, so this is like pretty standard here, black takes this spot. So let's look at that. So now black takes that spot, he has a double wing. What should white do? Well, white has two, three choices. One, two, and three. Wait, am I missing a stone somewhere? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> right, so white can either play here, big knight, or just go super big knight and let's start attacking the moil a little bit here too. <clears throat> but um, 
Black can also, instead of just playing passive four, Black can just also approach here on the next one, right? And then now, if White backs off, Black will have a lot of choices to play on the next move. He'll play here, here, and here, right? So Black has a lot of options. Now, you're saying, hello, Badukbum. Uh, you're saying, well, you're saying white was bad up here. Why is it good for black to play here? Why is that an option? Because if white comes in here and play the same thing, let's say the same thing happened. Whoops. The same thing happened here, not for ADP. <laughs> so the same thing happened here. Is my resolution messed up? Because I try to fix the frame rate. The frame rate is doing good, but now resolution might mess up. Uh, as you can see here, there's no 3-3. There's no 3-3 to be invaded. So this is OK. The other option of white earlier, if you go back and look, there's a 3-3 invasion there, right? So this stone is much stronger. So if white wants to come in, let's say black plays something like this, some, something crazy like that. If, if white comes in, white's under attack automatically. And it's, you know, can he live? I don't know, but that's the reason why it's okay to play that. But black also has two more options, which is this one, right? So this is one somewhere in the middle. So the problem with this one is, it's kind of far from the stone. So if any fight happens, the stone might not be able to come up and help, right? It might. But let's say if black choose to play here, then this stone is way out and it's really hard to have. So this stone has very little value to help this one, right? But it does help the corner out a lot more. So in, during the opening, this is very important, to choose your extension and stuff is where do you want to put your pressure and where do you want to help, right? So this stone here is closer to this stone, so it helps out a lot more. This stone is further away from this stone, so it can't help out much, but it can help out the corner a lot more. So it's a balance. It's a balancing game, right? So it could be one, two, or three. <clears throat> and so if black plays, let's say black plays one, this solid connection and then white can come in at two so now we're getting into the fun part of studying the Chinese opening is how to destroy the moyo because the moyo is gonna come in very heavy if you don't do if you don't know how to uh, use sabaki and just you know just create shapes inside of your uh, opponent's fear of influence <clears throat> Oh, before I go to that one though, uh, the reason why you don't want to play this one is because now, right, white can attack you. But, you know, you can still attach here and stuff like that, but um, that's the reasoning why to choose between one, two, and three. So it's what type of game you want to play here. You want to help the stone or you want to help the corner? So it's, you know, you got to choose. You can't have everything. Now you play in the middle, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be weak on both sides, really. So white comes in here. Now the standard attack, um, the pattern of attack back in the day is black will back off like this, then white will attach. I'm pretty sure you've seen this pattern before. And then uh, white will try to make a shape, right? So this is uh, how to kind of start making a shape. Then black will keep on the pressure. So whites kind of have to, because this is not alive. Locally, it's not alive. And if you play something like this, and black just seal you off, this might just be, might as well be dead here. So you gotta be careful, right? If not dead, you're still surrounded pretty hard. So white tries to break out. And not only that, after you play this, you can have an option to invade here as well, right? <clears throat> So here, 
Black is going to use some um, pokey poke here, some forcing move to get some shapes for this stone here, right? R. So this this is actually pretty classic uh, shape for this invasion. Well, not really invasion, but this white entering into the Chinese formation like this. So black is going to pull down like this, and then white's going to have to defend, right? If white does something uh, like that, then uh, later on his eye shape is going to be like not not there because because of this opening. Let's say if you if you connect here, black has this combination, right? So you definitely don't want that. So your eye can be poked out at any time. So you don't want that. So white does defend here, and then now because of this, black has a really nice move here. And so white has to connect, right? But if you connect like this, just straight up connect, is um, it's safe, but it gives black some really nice follow up move. I mean, they're kind of like similar to Endgame, but it's really sente. And so black gets really nice move of this forcing move here. So this forcing move later on is very painful. It's very very painful for white. So somehow white has to solve this and block this from white because this is quite annoying. It's not it's not two eyes here. So before you connect here, white has a really nice attachment here as S9. Now this shape is very very common in game usually. So remember this small knight slide move here, attachment to the stone. Usually that will give you some shape. So if you watch a lot of Dom games. Uh, especially a higher tier Dom game, you're going to see a lot of these attachments when they are trying to settle a shape. So basically, if black cuts, white has a really nice combination like this. And then now this is like considered oh, a really good result for white here. Coming in, super strong shape, nothing to be attacked anymore, right? So black can't do that. So black can't block from the outs the inside, so black has to block from the outside. And when black blocks from the outside, black still can't cut here because we have this, right? So black's not gonna crawl like this. This is really bad for black. So black can't cut there. So black would have to defend this shape first. So black defends the shape, and then white gets to come back in here. And this is alive now. Believe it or not, that's alive. If black comes in there, it's still alive, right? That's the, the main shape. But if black does something like that, it's still, it's still alive. Very, very alive. So that shape is very alive. So it's alive. So this is successful for white. Right? You don't have a weak group to attack or anything like that. Okay, and then so now... Now we're going to go to the really meat and potato of the attack here on the, the Chinese formation stone here. Okay, let me get the stone correct. Alright. Mm -hmm. There is an attack. Instead of entering at Q4 or Q5, there is a uh, this move here. Wait, mm -hmm. shoulder hit? That doesn't seem right. Hold one second. No, okay, no, not shoulder hit. So you have this. You have this uh, approach already. And then uh, black plays this instead of backing off. So now we're going to look at this variation here. So in the last one, if black back off, then you can settle pretty easy, right? So black is trying to get this area and trade for the here. So just one more time for you guys to remind you, not that combination, but instead of not this one. Right? This attachment. Very important. You should learn this and memorize it and try to use it during your game. Um, but now we're going to look at this. 
Now, if you block here, it would be a grave, grave mistake to block here because now you're just under attack. Right? And what can you do here? I mean, anything you do is going to help black develop. Develop here, develop here. You run out, it's going to develop some more. Everything you do is going to help black develop. Right? So how do you solve this black Kosumi? Well, the counter to it, believe it or not, is this Kosumi. And then black's going to push. Then you can jump. Black's going to push in. And then here, you don't want to play this. You don't want to play this. This move does make shape, but there's a better option. The reason why you want to play this is because black can poke through and get some really nice forcing move here. And then you're still under attack. It's not great. You're a dumpling, right? It's not great here. So, what are some moves to instead of that? What do you play? The answer is here. One more. So you're kind of making a box shape here. But this time, when Black pushed through and cut here, what can you do? Huh? Maybe here? The options are a lot. You pretty much destroyed his moil. And your your shape is pretty strong. I mean there there is a cut here. If he wants to cut here, if he defend here, then you're good. Um, if the ladder is good for you, you can run the ladder. Hmm? If it's good. <clears throat> so here, instead of playing the typical jump, right, that we usually know, this one looks pretty good, but this one is actually a lot better. In this situation, of course. But, um, as anything else in Go, Black will try to find a counter, right? So instead of playing here, what Black can do is also play here. Then you jump this way, you push this way, and then in this situation, you do play 6, right? Because this poke here, It leaves a weakness, it's unlike the other facing direction. And here you got you kind of have a lot more space. You can push down here and try to make a eye shape here, or you can escape. But the thing is, Black's not gonna push through this time. This time, Black will try to play this first. So he'll play the poke first. He'll play the poke, and then try to... Nope, 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 nope. That is a different secret. Hold on. I'm missing a stone here. <clears throat> Four, five, six. Well, he does poke, but I'm missing a one. That is the problem. It's a huge problem. Oh, okay. So instead of sliding either side, my bad. Black plays here first, and then when white plays two, then black pushes. Okay, now that makes more sense. <laughs> then he pushed through, and then play that, right? So now, actually, that seems kind of dangerous. To play that. So here, black's going to play seven to defend that because of the push through, right? So now if white doesn't defend, he gets cut. And then like, this is a lot of, kind of like a lot of points here, right? You can't really play here. You, you would have to play something like this. And that kind of sucks. You're still kind of like a stick. I wouldn't say that's successful, but it's not bad either. I think the modern game, uh, the AI will grade that a lot different 
than uh, the pros back in the day. So anyway, here's eight. So white defends. So you kind of get some shape, some sideways shape here. So you can jump later. No. And then black pokes through, and then white connect. Right. This is no good for white. And you kind of can see why, right? So it looks like black found the counter to this move. He's not going to simply back off, but then white settles too easy. And you play the Kosumi, you block, then you're going to be under attack, right? So there's this very, very sensitive situation here against the Chinese formation because that's the whole idea of this opening. So if you counter with the Kosumi, he's not going to push because pushing gives you really nice shape, right? So he's not going to push that side, and then he's not going to push this side either. White have counter to that. So instead, he'll play the outside, supporting his stone, make a nice shape. And then if you block here, the result is pretty bad for white. You're kind of like a dumpling, right? So here, White has to rethink about the Kosumi. <clears throat> so here, instead of playing white Kosumi, which is kind of heavy, making white kind of heavy, you have to think light. Light and fast. So you can get out fast. So uh, I guess I'll show the combination here. Actually, this move. Now, it does look kind of loose, but there's a reason why behind it. So if black plays here, right, to kind of like try to threaten to poke you off, to cut you here. So you don't want to defend that like that because that way white de black develops really easy, like even though you have shape, but you don't really have eye shape yet. It's just very easy for black to develop that. So you don't want to do that either. So here, you actually want to play this. So basically, you're going to sacrifice this stone, right? So if black push through and wants that stone, you give it. You give that stone. Like your shape is so strong outside, right? This is what it's all about. And then later on, you do have a pushing move here too. Like you can push here. And if he doesn't defend, you can Atari. Let's say he defends here. Play like that. Capture that stone. So so from there, I guess you can push down one more. And then black does have to defend here. And then maybe you can come back and attach. Or something like that, right? But your shape looks really good here. So black doesn't want to poke through like that, right? So after that, black's probably going to defend here. And then you can finish off your shape with that. Now remember, you're not trying to save this stone. Uh, it's, it'll be a mistake for black to try to save this stone. So here, you're just going to cap this stone. And then now you have a light shape outside that's decently strong. It's a Kosumi with a big knight. And that shape can be defended pretty easily uh, at the Dawn level. And then you have another sequence here. I'm telling you, this this content is like super dense. It's super dense. Um, so you have this, and then let let's say if black plays something like this, like super passive, then you have a nice attachment here. If he tried to cover from the outside, he cannot, because this is a ladder, and then this is also a ladder. So if he's tried to save, let let's say he tried to save this stone. I like hurry this way, you, you just do that, and then you capture this in a ladder, you, you're alive in the corner, and mission successful. And he cannot um, save these stones, because then you can just capture this one stone. And then after you capture one stone, um, the shape is pretty much alive with a funnel key. So you can't do that. We are almost at the end of this lesson, actually. And then here he just illustrate that why you don't want to push down like this because now you're gonna get attacked, right? One two like this, and uh, 
you're giving black too many points and too many points of attack. So basically, you're kind of falling into the, the Chinese openings trap. And what else? Uh, another way to play here. Also, just going straight to this one. Now, it looks strange. It looks very strange, mind you. Right? But there's a reason why this move works. And then I'm going to have to continue this on the next video because. It's going to be probably like 16 video series because to understand opening truly, you got to know all these sequence and these possibilities, and then you can know when and where to enter uh, the Moyo. So here, black has to defend here, okay? Black has to defend here. Um, the reason is, let's say if black plays something like this, white can have a nice forcing move here and start making shape really, really easily. So you don't want that. Like, white can make shapes really easy here, so... Black will defend here, and after that, white has this nice attachment here. And if he plays 4, you just go play 5 like this, 6, and then 7. And then make shape that way. This one though, this one black, I would say consider black fell for that one. Um, but if black defends here, there's also another combination you can do, which is the press. And the press will set black into a depression because these only gain six points, and white has a really nice wall on the outside. And, uh, you know, this pretty much black's potential got pushed down as much as possible here so white successful right get this press and that's why black has to defend that press by playing it himself earlier but if he plays here then we'll get that oh and then there's a nice uh, combination here if black counters with that the empty triangle Now why is this cut bad for black? It seems like it's good. It seems like, hey, I'm alive in the corner. You're split into two groups. I should play, maybe play the empty triangle and cut you. Right, so here, attachment, empty triangle, cut. You see this all the time, but you gotta watch this stone. This stone is pretty amazing. This is a really amazing stone here. It has it, a job to do and it's about to do it. If you can read a little bit. You can kind of see why. Can't play here. Well, I guess he can. But later on, it's going to be some trouble there. But look at this. Talk about getting some nice thickness. And then now, this, this thing is open. This is open. What if black cuts here? Of course, you're going to play this. Right? Sacrifice the two stone. Pretty good positioning, if you ask me. So that's why that move, that weird looking big knight move in the center of the board, that's why it's there just for this combination here so once you play that black defends the press you can play this attachment and then black would have have to do this passively like this and then now you're kind of outside you're pretty good looking pretty good and that wraps up episode one of the opening series and uh, i hope you guys enjoy it if you like it, give a thumbs up. Um, other than that, I'll try to get episode 2 out maybe next week. But uh, yeah, I think there's, in total there's 16. I'm looking at my notes now. There's 16 of them. Uh, the information gets more dense as we go on. But uh, 
now you know a little bit of the Chinese opening and how to attack it a little bit, right? And so now you're not going to be afraid and you're not going to get jealous when your opponent start playing the Chinese and start getting a real nice moyo. You can be a little patient now. You say, you know what? I know how to invade that. I'll let him play that. Maybe I'll approach up top first. Or something like that, right? So you're not going to be automatically afraid right away. But there's a reason why the Chinese opening is bad. And I think we'll get into it in episode 3 and episode 4. Or 2, 3, 4. Um, the modern Go doesn't like Chinese opening because White have found an exploit to it. And um, we'll get to know that on the next episode. Anyway... That's it for the YouTube episode of the opening, and now we're going to go play some games. Now we'll try to find some games and play. <clears throat> if we can find some games. Sometimes it's a struggle on IGS. If not, we'll switch to the One Don account and I can try to illustrate some of the opening. But I don't really come across that many people playing the Chinese opening anymore. Because it it's not like the amateur people like let's say the the amateur has a population, right? And then the pro has a population. It's not the pro figure out how to kind of destroy the Chinese opening pretty consistently, right? Because before the Chinese people, uh, the Chinese pros would win a lot. Like Chinese rise as the Chinese opening got popular and people didn't know how to handle it. Well, eventually people found a way to handle it and how to come out ahead actually against the Chinese opening. So it went away in the pro. But the funny thing is because amateur kind of just like try to replicate what's popular um with the pros that because it disappeared from pro play it kind of disappeared from regular play as well like amateur play but really chinese opening is really effective all the way to like i want to say like four don because a lot of four don still don't know how to handle it correctly um same one thing with the son rensei too and then later on we're going to get to the son rensei and why it's bad also but uh Okay, um, Min, uh, what rank are you? <laughs>